Solving systems of linear equations can get difficult when there are more than two variables or equations. So what we can do is convert this system right here into a matrix. So how we do this is first we draw the matrix and then we want to place the coefficients of each variable in this matrix. So x1 right here um, this column, first we have a coefficient of 0, then 2, then 1. Second column, we have negative 3, 0, 2. Third column, we have 6, 2, negative 1. Then draw a dotted line, and in the fourth column, we put the constant negative 6, 2, and 3. So that's our base matrix, and then we can apply row operations. So in the end, we want this main diagonal right here to all be 1. So the first step we can do is swap R1, which is row 1, with row 3. When we do this, we get 1, 2, negative 1, 3, 2, 0, 2, 2, and 0, negative 3, 6, negative 6. Then our next row operation, what we can do is we can take row 2, equals row 2 minus 2 times row 1. And the point of this is, when we form this matrix, the first row stays the same, so we're just modifying the second row. And so we do this 2 right here. We're going to do 2 minus 2 times row 1, which is 1 which gets us 0. Then we do 0 minus 2 times 2 is negative 4. And 2 minus negative 1 times 2 is 4. And then 2 minus 3 times 2 is negative 4. Third row stays the same. And our next operation, we can do two steps at once. We don't have to write out each step. Um, we can do row 2 equals negative 1 fourth times row 2. And we can do row 3 is 1 third times row 3. And when we do this, row 1 is not affected. Row 2 is we get 1 here, which is what we want in the main diagonal. This is negative 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 2, negative 2. And then we can go row 3 equals row 3 plus row 2 which gets us, row 1 stays the same, row 2 stays the same as well, but row 3, this becomes 0, this becomes 1, this becomes negative 1. So we've reached our goal of getting the main diagonals to be 1 and below the main diagonal is all zeros. So we could solve the equation now if we wanted to, um, because we know that um, x3 is equal to negative 1. And we can plug that into the second equation to find x2, and so on in the first equation to find x1. Or we can continue doing row operations 
to get these values to be 0. So what we can do is again combine two row operations. We can do row 2 is row 2 plus row 3 and row 1 is row 1 plus row 3. And when we do that, we get 1, 2, um, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Um, and then 3 plus negative 1 is 2. And then the second row, 0, 1, 0, 0. Third row stays the same. And then our final step is we can go row 1 equals row 1 minus 2 row 2. And that gets us to 1, 0, 0, 2 minus, this stays a 2, 0, 1, 0, everything else is the same. And this is our final matrix. So we got all 1's here, and then everything else is a 0. And so now, we can see right away x1 equal to 2, x2 is equal to 0, x3 is equal to negative 1. And that's our solution. And a quick note, if you get to your final matrix like this, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, This can be any value. I'm in the last row. If it's all zeros right here, and this is zero, and that means there is an infinite number of solutions because x3 can be any number, or you could say x3 is all real numbers. And then the other case is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then this is a non-zero number in the fourth column. Um, and this means this is impossible, right? You can't have 0x3 is equal to 3. That just doesn't make sense. So in this one, the solution, um, there's no solution.